is News Channel 5 at 6. Teachers in one bi-state school district launch an informal picket to rally for better salaries and avoid a strike. Money problems totaling in the millions in St. Charles could stop the construction of several projects. I send my son to this camp because of their leadership program and to basically build up his self-esteem. But what this mother claims built nothing except fear, distrust, and a lifetime of emotional scars. Good evening, everyone. Our top story, a lawsuit filed this week in federal court alleges a brutal incident of abuse and neglect at Sherwood Forest Camp in southern Missouri. The suit alleges three campers sodomized another camper. Now the victim's mother is suing the camp. As News Channel 5's Lisa Zygman reports, the victim's mother agreed to talk with us today, but we have concealed her identity to protect her son. The alleged incident took place in July of 98 at Sherwood Forest Campsite in Lesterville, about 120 miles south of St. Louis. It is a camp for local underprivileged children funded by the United Way. Three of the boys uh, jumped him, uh, attacked him, and assaulted him with a broomstick. Something happened between four boys. Exactly what occurred between those four boys, we're not sure. The suit alleges neglect and that children were left unattended for long periods of time. Charges vehemently denied, but the camp's executive director says... There are times when kids get angry with each other and can gang up on each other in a big hurry. And that can happen in a 10-second period. Uh, that would happen anywhere, whether it's at school or Sunday school or on the playground or where have you. The victim's mother also questions the amount of time that passed before her son received treatment and before she was notified. The incident happened around 12 o'clock. They notified me like 3.55. Four hours? Four hours after this happened to my son. Attorneys for Sherwood Forest say camp procedures were followed to the letter and looks forward to defending the camp in court. If you read that lawsuit, that is not what happened based upon the investigation that's been conducted and based upon all the medical records which show that there was no physical injury to this young man. In fact, an investigation by the state found the abuse report unsubstantiated. A spokesperson with the Division of Family Services says just because the attack wasn't substantiated it doesn't mean it never occurred. He says that's a criminal matter which was investigated by juvenile authorities. But we may never know what happened because juvenile records are always sealed. What we do know comes from the victim's mother who tells News Channel 5 that she was satisfied with actions taken against the juveniles following the criminal investigation. And Sherwood Forrest admits that the three teens were kicked out of camp immediately following the attack. Now the victim's mother wants the camp to pay for ongoing medical expenses and the family's emotional trauma. Lisa Zygman, News Channel 5. Attorneys for Sherwood Forest say the victim's family has tried to negotiate a financial settlement for more than a year now, but that Sherwood Forest has no intention of settling because they contend there was never any neglect. Police don't have a definite cause, but they say a woman found dead this morning in South St. Louis was a homicide victim. A maintenance man at the Carondelet Apartments found the body of the 29-year-old woman after neighbors complained of a foul odor. The woman had been apparently dead for days. Investigators say they have not released the victim's name. There is new information tonight about a body found earlier this week in Franklin County. Investigators have identified the body as 21-year-old Shane Lashley of Robertsville. According to sheriff's deputies, he was shot to death near Frost Road in Lonedell. The death is still under investigation. So far, there is no motive and no suspects have been arrested. Reverend Jesse Jackson visited Godfrey, Illinois today and urged workers not to cross the picket line at Beverly Farm. Jackson offered to help negotiate an end to the seven-week-old strike at the facility for the disabled. News Channel 5's Tom Atwood joins us now live from our Illinois Bureau with the very latest. Tom? Deanne, Jesse Jackson never got a chance to negotiate today because Beverly Farm Director Monty Welker was out of town and couldn't meet with him. So what Jackson did instead was to energize striking workers at a rally just outside the Beverly Farm facility. Workers are on strike for better wages, and they also want management to recognize the union they voted to join five years ago. Today, Jackson aimed his remarks at union workers that have decided to cross the picket line and not take part in the strike. You cannot admire Martin Luther King and walk across that picket line. You cannot admire Mandela and walk across that picket line. Today, you must take dignity over dollars. Take dignity over dollars. Take dignity over dollars. Take dignity over dollars. 
Union leaders say 150 workers are on strike, but officials at Beverly Farms say the number is much lower than that. They say three-fourths of the workers are still on the job and ignoring the strike. In the meantime, Jesse Jackson says he will come back to negotiate if he's needed. Deanne, back to you. Okay, thank you, Tom. A strike could be on the horizon for a small school district in Lebanon, Illinois. Uh, this morning, more than 800 students were greeted by teachers with informational pickets on their first day of school. The teachers in the District 9 want higher salaries and a new contract from the school board. As News Channel 5's Kelly Jackson reports, a strike would be a last resort. It is the first day of school for students in Lebanon District 9. And as kids go for their summer vacation, their teachers are also outside, but for a different reason. With picket signs in hand, they are sending a message to the school board demanding a fair contract. We'd like to settle. Um, that's one reason why we decided to go ahead and start school, to show that we want to bargain in good faith uh, and resolve this matter without uh, an interruption to the kids' education. It was an informational picket, so school did start as planned. The 62 teachers in Local 4212 say their contract expired August 24th, and they haven't reached an agreement with the school board on wages. The final offer of the school board has been for a 4% uh, increase in teachers' salaries from the previous year, as well as uh, a second year offer of 4.5% increase in salary. But the teachers' union says that increase is misleading since a 2% increase currently exists in the contract as teachers gain seniority in the district. The union filed a 10-day intent to strike notice this week, but they say that would be their last resort. As parents brought their children to school, many support the teachers. If that's what they need to do, that's what they should do. You know, I don't want my children out of school for a long time, but if that's what they need to do, you know, to get an increase, I think they should do it. But while some students found it unusual to see their teachers picketing... We're supposed to be in school and they out holding signs. It's just not normal. Everybody telling Many supported their cause, saying they've earned a raise. The, the teachers deserve... Um, a, con a fair contract because all these all these kids out here sometimes act really crazy and wild and then the teachers you know just really has a you know big headache with that kind of stuff kelly jackson news channel five now the union met with the lebanon illinois school board on monday no other meetings though have been planned again teachers say it would only be a last resort to strike but if that should happen they say they would give parents at least one day's notice MetLife is taking over St. Louis-based Gen America. Metropolitan Life of New York will assume Gen America's $6 billion debt to investors. Banks and mutual funds pulled their money out of Gen America's subsidiary, General American Life, after that company's bond rating fell earlier this month. Gen America and its subsidiaries employ 3,000 people in St. Louis, and executives now say most of them will be able to keep their jobs. Our employees will not have uh, strong concerns about uh, whether or not there will be an abrupt change in their status. MetLife predicts 10% of jobs locally could be cut, but company officials admit they could expand their employment base in St. Louis. The buyout still has to be approved by state regulators. Well, the mayor of Denver has some ideas on how to revitalize St. Louis. Today, Mayor Wellington Webb of Denver delivered the keynote address at the annual meeting of the Downtown St. Louis Partnership. During Webb's time in office, Denver has added 3,000 new housing units, a new major league ballpark, 50 vacant buildings in the city have been restored, and office occupancy exceeds 90%. Webb says to save St. Louis City, start looking for help in St. Louis County. I'd be willing to say that many of the people that live around St. Louis, when they're doing international business and national business, they say they're from St. Louis because they're going to identify with the market <laughs> product that they can sell internationally and nationally. And Denver's Mayor Webb advises patience to people who think that downtown can be turned around overnight. He says it's taken nearly a decade for some of his economic policies to work. While the Gateway City is looking to the future, another local city is just trying to pay for things in the present. Up next at 6, we'll take you to St. Charles, where financial troubles could put more than a few projects on hold. And after weather tonight, get ready to battle a Pokemon or tackle some of the toughest golf courses around. We'll have a unique video game experience for you coming up. This is News Channel 5 at 6 with Deanne Lane, Dan Craig, John Fuller, and Mike Bush.
apple picking is a popular fall family activity. I'm Heidi Gloss, and I'll show you where you and your family can pick the perfect apple on the next Show Me St. Louis. And where do you turn when your pet is in peril? We'll show you the newest way to protect your family's best friend. It is pampering in grand fashion, from bath salts to champagne and a heart-shaped whirlpool. I'll take you on a tour of the Beale Mansion Bed and Breakfast. Don't miss Show Me St. Louis, tomorrow at 3, only on Channel 5. St. Charles City has the plans, but not the cash for several big road projects. And Bureau Chief Brian Edwards reports new administrators caught the incorrect estimates and alerted elected officials who are now looking for ways to complete the work. It is a windy, hilly, curvy thoroughfare. Emergency workers say car crashes on Hemsith Road have killed about a half dozen people in a decade. St. Charles City put this and other roads on a priority list. But new administrators, along with the Public Works Department, found that cost figures from the past were underestimated. Now they're looking for solutions. It isn't as though the projects have uh, just been thrown away. It just means that uh, some of them will be delayed. In fact, numerous plans are underfunded. Hackman Road, $2 million. Zumbo, $900,000. Hemsys, 600000 First Capital, four hundred and forty. dollars City Hall and parking together, $330,000. Those underfunded projects have not yet been started, so St. Charles City leaders do have some time to make up the shortfall with other revenue sources like East-West Gateway and federal grants. But this project, the Hawks Nest Overpass, is well on its way to completion and two and a half million dollars over budget. There are other means to make up the money. The city is looking at cuts like not purchasing snow removal vehicles or shifting money from projects that came in with surpluses. We were surprised that the projects uh, would be coming in with uh, this amount of uh, uh, funding shortfall. Porterfield says completing the work will be difficult, but had most projects already been started, the job would even be harder. Brian Edwards, News Channel 5. Now, the only project currently underway, the Hawk's Nest overpass that will cross I-70, is expected to be open in October next year. Electronic stop signs, automatic doors, and those familiar blinking lights. And there are devices that over the years have helped keep kids safer on school buses. Tonight, a new high-tech device that will take safety to the next level. The story coming up. And in weather, temperatures really heated up today, but when are we going to hit that 90-degree mark again? We'll check that out and have a tropical update coming your way. Stay with us. Get into your Mazda dealer's zero-in on savings closeout event. Out of my For low 0% financing on every 99 Mazda. There's never been a better time to save, so hurry in. Take advantage of 0% financing on every 99 Mazda. Or choose up to 3,000 cash back during Mazda's zero-in on savings closeout event. You know, moms like this often wonder, what helps kids build strong bodies? Well, they could lift 300 pounds a day or wear this absurd costume. He's not fooling anyone. Or you can give them Wonder Bread with peanut butter like my mom gave me. Wonder has a vitamins, awesome onions. Oh. It's soft and delicious, too. So do what I do. Remember the wonder. Oh, medic. I need a medic. This week's Volunteer 5 organization is Mosaics. They're looking for dozens of volunteers to help at this year's Missouri Festival for the Arts in St. Charles. Volunteers are needed to do everything from helping visitors create to working at the food and information booths. Keep these guys busy. Give them a call right now, 969-VOL5. It only happens once in a lifetime. It's New York Carpet World's giant 73rd birthday sale. Save up to 50% off carpet, 25% off pad, plus 25% off labor. Save on floors, laminate, vinyl, wood, ceramic, area rugs too. Plus buy with no payments, no interest for one year. Save up to 50% off carpet, 25% off Encore One pad, 25% off labor. Through Saturday, it's New York Carpet World's 73rd birthday sale. Savings so big, they only happen once. Don't miss it. It's about summer and driving down. One local school bus company wants to make sure no students are left behind during the school day. So Laidlaw Transit showed off their new alarm system today. Small children and are left behind when the bus is parked. 
So this system makes sure the driver walks back to make sure the children have actually left. The driver must reset a security box at the back of the bus. If he doesn't, the vehicle's horn will sound, just like that. Laidlaw transports about 20,000 children a day to St. Louis City Schools. Another precaution to make sure everybody's safe this a, school year. Not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Meteorologist John Fuller joining us now. The evenings in St. Louis have been quite pleasant this week, you know? Turn yeah, off the, the AC. Yeah, you can turn off the air conditioner as late at night into the early morning hours. Temperatures cooling back into the 60s thanks to the jet stream. <laughs> and that jet stream is going to help out the East Coast over the weekend trying to keep a Dennis away from the coastline. But this morning brought us a low of 65 degrees. Kansas City, 66. Still quite warm in Dallas. Their morning low was 80 degrees. And notice how this jet stream shoots to the north and east. We have Cindy. It's the most powerful hurricane right now. But Dennis is the closest. And with the help of the jet stream, it looks like it's going to do a little loop and just skim the Atlantic seaboard states around the Carolinas. That is preliminary. And that is a projected path. And you can see all three of them. Here is Cindy. We have Emily well down to the south and Dennis skimming through the Bahamas right now. There are hurricane warnings posted for the central Bahamas, but that system is moving away from that area right now very, very slowly. It's nearly stationary. You can see it's a big blob, a cloud of thunderstorms across Nassau in the Bahamas right now, but it is strengthening just a touch. Closer to home, we had sunshine today, but notice to the west and southwest, some much needed rain. Too bad we couldn't tap into that, but it'll stay dry here. Those showers will stay away and it'll stay warm. 86 degrees right now, but as the sun sets, it will cool back. Kansas City 75. Big time heat continues over the central and southern plains. 102 in Oklahoma City, 104. In Dallas, a little closer to home, temperatures are in the upper 80s from Belleville at 88, Alton at 84 degrees, and Chesterfield at 86. Let's check on current conditions as we watch a barge float to downstream along the Mississippi River, officially at Lambert. It is 86 degrees, partly sunny, our humidity 48%. Winds east at 8, and the barometric pressure 29.91 inches and falling. The high today hit 88 degrees. That's a couple degrees above normal. The low this morning down to 65. Normal low for this date is 66 degrees. Well, it remains dry here with the exception of those thunder showers over western sections of Missouri. Again, another perspective of Dennis that is churning towards the mid-Atlantic states, but notice this front that is going to kind of shunt it off to the east and to the northeast as it looks now over the weekend. Severe weather out over the southwestern part of the state, but for us, high pressure will bring us mostly clear skies overnight tonight, mostly sunny skies again for tomorrow. It'll be warm with a high of 90 degrees 92 in Kansas City. Are you doing some traveling? Pretty nice weather here if you like it. Warm, dry conditions, center part of the United States. Some afternoon thunder showers in the Rockies and rain is likely in the northeastern United States. Lake of the Ozarks, another fantastic one. Lots of sunshine, highs in the lower 90s. Overnight tonight, not quite as cool as last night, Dan and Deanne. Low down to 70 degrees. Mostly sunny and warm tomorrow, a high of 90. And the extended version of the forecast shapes up this way lots of dry weather i know we need rain for the lawns the gardens but it looks like it will remain dry until the middle of next week all right thanks, thanks john. john well at one point or another in your life you've probably played a video game or two now you have a chance to play some of the hottest games around and a few others that aren't even available yet on the market thanks to the blockbuster truck the truck was in crestwood today it's a 34 foot long high-tech truck designed by nintendo and blockbuster huh. it has 12 game stations where kids of all ages can play everything from pokemon and star wars to donkey kong and golf and the truck will be at the westfield shopping town at west county that's formerly west county mall in De Pere, this saturday from one to eight best of all the games are free and the lines should be long they, uh, they will be the kids <laughs> are going to love that up next in sports this is a day of milestones randy johnson does in the marlins and much more and Michael Johnson blazes to the tape in Spain. On the next. Some tough news from the track yesterday, but not the case today. Ooh, huh? red, white, and blue is like trumpeting today. Right. <laughs> big, big speed. Greetings one and all. For the better part of eight years, Michael Johnson has dominated the 400-meter race. But the fastest time in the world belonged to American Butch Reynolds for the last 11 seasons. The longest standing men's record until today in Spain at the World Championships. Superman, a.k.a. Johnson, turned in a time of 43.18 seconds. That's a full tenth of a second faster than Reynolds. He now holds eight 
of the top 10 fastest times ever recorded at that distance. Boy, that's impressive. The stakes just got a little bit higher for Grand Fury today. The Blues inked Roman Turek to a multi-year deal. Turek comes to the gateway after helping the Dallas Stars cradle the cup last June. Shortly after that, he was picked up for a draft choice in the 99-entry draft. He minded the net in 26 games for the Stars and ranked fifth in the NHL last season with a goals against average just over two and a winning percentage of 915. That's tied for 10. That's not too bad. For a team that's lost three straight games and has slipped to two games under 500, this is horrible news. The Atlanta Braves are coming to town. They only sport the best record in the bigs and work a seven-game winning streak. When they go on Friday, it'll be Garrett Stevenson against Terry Mulhall. And last night in Montreal, the Expos completed the three-game sweep of the Birds. Cards managed seven hits, only one of those coming with runners in scoring position. That gave Jeremy Powell just his second win of the year. Montreal wins it, by the way, final of 4-1. to one. Sweet swinging Sammy Sosa against the Giants in the fifth, and Sammy has left the yard off of Levon Hernandez. This is Sammy's 53rd of the year. He now, he's now two up on Big Mac in the home run race, if you want to call it that. He's nine games ahead of his 66 homer pace of last year. By the way, the Cubs came back to win it by a final 11-10. Randy Johnson firing BBs today in Florida, D-backs and Marlins, and the big unit struck out nine and seven innings, giving him 301 Ks for the season and 29 starts. That's the quickest ever by any pitcher getting the 300 Ks in a season, and he's now only 82 away from Nolan Ryan's all-time record of 383, set back in 1973. Arizona won their eighth in a row, beating Florida 12-2. St. Louis Ambush is heading into the new season with a new mindset. Team owner, Dr. Abe Hawatma, has turned the coaching duties over to one of the best players in league history. The man who will lead the St. Louis Ambush into the new millennium, Jamie Swanner. Past five seasons, Jamie Swanner has been the Bush's last line of defense. But he has done it all in his 14-year career. Eight all-NPSL appearances, six NPSL Goalkeeper of the Year awards. He was tabbed as an All-Star 11 times. For now, he will forego the player-coach moniker and stay with coaching. What I want to do is I want to concentrate on one thing first, and that's putting a quality team together. I want to concentrate on making sure that everybody understands their roles, and I want to work really hard in the office and out in the community. And if we can do that, then we're going to be successful on and off the field. Next Tuesday, the Rams and the rest of the teams in the NFL have to whittle their roster down to 65 players. Dick Vermeil and his coaches are scrutinizing every position and trying to decide who will make up that final roster of 53 on September the 5th. Up to this point in the preseason, Coach V hasn't had a lot of praise for his kicking game, punting in particular. The battle is between the 11-year vet Rick Tootin against the rookie from Georgia Tech, Rodney Williams. He was drafted by the Rams in the seventh round. In one less punt, he is averaging close to 10 yards more in distance. But you know what? Mm. In this game, that does not give you a lock on any mm -hmm. position in the National Football League. That's right. Thanks, Malcolm. You bet. Parents are expected to pack a Francis Howell school board meeting tonight. The subject, approving the current year's budget after announcing a multi-million dollar mistake. A live report coming up tonight at 10. Plus, the St. Louis City Health Department takes a new tactic to drastically reduce the number of sexually transmitted diseases. Those stories coming up tonight on News Channel 5 at 10. That ends this edition of News Channel 5 at 6 o'clock. Thanks for being with us. Hope to see you tonight at 10. Good night.